All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast. And today I have the powerhouse, an amazing man that just I'm privileged to have here on this show. He is the sensation behind the P90X program. He's authored three amazing books. And on top of that, he really believes real lasting change comes from living a healthy lifestyle. This man is my God for health. And I'm so proud to have him here, right? Uh, guys, I want you to welcome Mr. Tony Horton. Tony, good to have you on, bro. Good, Richard. How are you and everybody else who's listening and watching? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. I'm fired up, my man, as always. <laughs> of course, man, of course. And I appreciate it since you just had some surgery done that, you know, man, I really appreciate you just giving the time for this. So I had a little work on my knees. That's right. I had some, uh, some, uh, I have some knee issues. So I have some little PRP blood mm -hmm. platelets and some synvisc in there. And now I've got the knees of a 20 year old boy. So I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you crush it. Maybe get you to do something here, hey? Nah. Messing yeah, with I'll you. do a backflip right here. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> awesome. So, Tony, man, for the people who don't know who you are or who, who haven't heard about you before, could you give us a bit more details about just, you know, a bit about how, how you got started in this industry, man? Well, you know, I'll tell you, when I was a wee lad, um, I was not athletic. I wasn't a good athlete at all. I was on the football team, more of a tackling dummy, really, than I was anything else. <laughs> I was yeah. a mediocre tennis, golf, golfer, skier. Um, then I moved out to California from Connecticut, Rhode Island area, and the lifestyle here was very different. And I was a, you know, I was a C-minus student with a speech impediment, really struggled a lot. I got beat up at the bus stop, shoved in the locker, lunch money stolen, the whole nine yards, you know what I mean? But I, there was a voice that said, you can be better, you can have more, and just the the fact that I moved from one part of the country to the other gave me a completely new perspective. Mm -hmm. And the lifestyle here is different, and I fell right into it. I mean, the, you know, there was a member of four gyms at one point. One was a bodybuilding gym, one was a cardio gym. One had all women in it, so that was a good move. Uh, you know, and I, and I just I just got into the lifestyle. My first client was Tom Petty, first celebrity yeah. client, and I got him ready for a tour. And after that, it just exploded for me. I was training Bruce Springsteen, and then Tom, and Billy Idol, and Annie Lennox, and and a lot of rockers and stuff. Um, and I was also doing stand-up comedy, which, you know, those two things don't have anything in common. I was, you know, an actor and I was going on auditions. So I was building my repertoire as not only a trainer, but somebody who could, you know, speak and be comfortable in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. And those, things, those two things changed about uh, 19 years ago when I met Carl Deichler, uh, who started this tiny company called Beachbody, kind of the same, let's get this thing at the world. Did our first program called Power 90, and I got to move out of my apartment that I lived in for 21 and a half years. <laughs> and, uh, and it's gone ever since. 17 years later, you know, P90X, X2, X3, P90, 10-minute trainer, and my brand new 22-minute hardcore just premiered this week. So that's me in a nutshell. Oh, amazing story, man. Amazing story. And so, Tony, man, I was reading another interview you did uh, not too long ago, and you were saying that your philosophy, the one that you live by, is all about three things, right? Being balanced, being healthy, and being happy, man. Walk us through yeah. that, man, especially like, you know, how you define each of them and how do you keep yourself in check for each of these three philosophies, man? Well, you know, within every rule, there's four or five other rules, that it's, and there's other like sub rules and everything else. But, you know, uh, most people are doing what I do for all the wrong reasons. They're doing it based on their ego. They're doing it based on other people's opinions. They're doing it because they want to try to compare themselves to the past, to other people, and hope that things in the future change. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all about tape measures and, and scales and numbers, and it's a very frustrating process for most people. So they end up doing some fad workout and some fad diet, and they can't figure out why it didn't work and why they're miserable. And it's about happiness. I mean, I think happiness is the ultimate goal on this earth, physical, mental, and emotional, financial uh, relationship happiness, right? And so the foundation of that, at least based on a Harvard Business Review, is physical fitness and healthy food. That's the foundation for everybody, and it's a universal truth for everybody, and it's not necessarily easy because it it rely, you, know, you have to rely on a certain amount of discipline, but too often we're using outside sources uh, of ourself for some short-term pleasure, but in reality, when you hunker down and you do the right thing, you take care of yourself, I'm talking hydration, I'm talking sleep, I'm talking stress control, I'm talking regular exercise, I'm talking a healthy diet, right? And I'm also talking about, like if you look at my book, um, The Big Picture, 11 Laws, it'll change your life. Um, <laughs> so one of them's reality, and a lot of us live in a fantasy world. We don't really actually look at the facts. We don't really actually live in the real world. We live in some kind of you know, convoluted version of our life, and we can't figure out why we haven't got our act together because we're not, we can't even tell the truth about who we are. 
Mm. You know, so we get these things figured out. You know what I mean? I've been to so many personal development courses and books and seminars, and I just pick and choose for the things that work, and that's where the 11 laws came from. Yeah. And so when you understand these basic things, you're ultimately happy. You ultimately have a purpose that you're far, you get out of bed and go, yeah. And even if you have a horrible job that you hate, if you've got a purpose that is a hobby or something that you do with other like-minded people that is unique and cool and adventurous and fun, mm -hmm. then your happy factor goes up and you don't, you know, you're not stressed out, freaked out, overwhelmed, overweight, and unhappy. The opposite occurs and it starts with moving your butt and eating food that your great, great, great grandparents recognize. Wow, man. Amazing, man. I love that. Is that where, how you actually, actually got yourself to start, right? Because I mean, I'm guessing it, it didn't take you like, you know, it wasn't overnight where you just happened to think, you know what, I, I just have to stay healthy and just start doing that. But it sounds like you spent, like you said, you know, many years, decades even, right, to get yourself in that right mindset so that you can get started so that you can attract people like Tom Petty, Bruce Springsteen, right, and Usher and, and all those other people that you've trained. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, it was, it's a 35 year experience and I'm still in it, you know, I'm still in it. I, I mean, I cut out sugar, not completely, but I was consuming too many healthy, gluten-free, low sugar, low fat desserts, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that was made in a factory that, you know, has a tree on the cover that's supposed to fool me into thinking it's actually okay for me. So I'm off of bars. I don't eat bars anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, like I had a Snickers bar in Jackson Hole when I was skiing. It was awesome. <laughs> it's so, so rare and so special, you know what I mean? But it's not like I, you know, I'm not, it's not like a crack where I'm just like, oh, I gotta have more crack, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was just a very rare thing. But every time I create, you know, a new discipline, I cut out alcohol years ago, which just changed everything. I just had more energy. I sleep better. I didn't wake up with the flu in the morning. I'm like, what? Like alcohol? What for? Can you yeah. imagine me on alcohol? Holy smokes! I mean, I barely have a filter as it is. I yeah, mean, yeah. with the booze, look <laughs> out! Right? So. So just these little disciplines along the way, you know, being more patient is one. Getting my eight hours of sleep is, a, is one. You know, making sure that I'm getting my, my eight glasses of eight ounces of water every day. And I'm not perfect every day on all of them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I do have that foundation of activity and behavior and thought patterns um, that really have altered my life. I mean, I was a miserable, sad procrastinator that was broke and didn't have a girlfriend. You know what I mean? So I spent a lot of days just throwing back a six pack of beers and hoping for the best. But you know what, it really comes down to education. I think most people struggle because they're, you know, after whatever, high school, college, grad school, that's it, they're done. They figure like they know everything they need to know. And in reality, there's just so much, because the world is changing. Like look at your phone. I mean, look at your phone compared yeah. to 10 years ago. Like nobody has a flip phone. I mean, you see somebody with a flip phone and you go, what is this, Zoolander? What are you doing, bro? <laughs> Zoolander. You, you know, so, so, you know, technology, I want the latest and the greatest, but when it comes to exercise and fitness and diet, we're still doing stuff that we, that might have kind of worked 15, mm. 20 years ago. And so you just got to stay ahead of the curve. That's also part of, part of it. So. Mm. And Tony, I want to jump back there. You were talking about that time where you weren't the, in, your, in the best shape of your life. You were depressed, you know, you're, you're eating the bad foods. What, what was the trigger for you, man? Like what got you to wake up out of that state and go, you know what? I got to go sort my life out. And it's not, and I know this, right? Is that at that time you weren't thinking about, I just want to be a personal trainer. You were just probably thinking about, I just need to change my life. And talk us through that period, man. Talk us through that moment where things just shifted for you. And I, I know it takes a long time to shift, right? Well, yeah, that, that sudden moment, moment of enlightenment, you know, the Japanese call it a Satori where you're kind of moving along and you don't really notice there's a change. And then, you know, it's not instant. It's not like in the course of a day. Sometimes it's in the course of a month or, or a half a year or even a year. But there's this sort of a shift that happens. Like you look back and go, oh, I don't do those things anymore. I don't hang out with those people anymore. And I've changed the way I eat. And now this new philosophy is not temporary, but it's permanent based on education and like hanging out with new people. And for me, I, I think there were a few of them. The first one was moving across the country, absolutely leaving the East Coast and leaving, you know, not to say that the people were the, the people or the place that I was, I just, need, I personally needed to get up and go and start over again. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, like people who move out of their house, like they end up, oh, what, what's all this stuff in my house? And they throw half of it away or give it away. And then you get a fresh start. It's just purely a fresh start. And then there was also a, a different, um, mindset out here and there were gyms everywhere like where I grew up the only gyms that existed were at the college campus or in the high school 
they weren't on like every other corner. You know I mean? That just didn't exist. It's like that across the country now, but this is 1980, right? So 1980, they had them here. Like I, I joined a sports connection. It was the nicest gym I'd ever seen. Nicer than any gym I'd ever seen on a college campus. Yeah. Just sitting on the corner in Santa Monica. And so it was really, and then the second thing I would say is meeting track athletes and meeting bodybuilders and meeting uh, people who live the lifestyle. I never had those type of friends. We had friends that played hoop and then we'd yeah. go drink six pack or we'd play some tennis and then smoke some pot. You know, you know what I mean? So it was just, it was, that's who that crowd was. And now I've got a different world, different people. Um, and I was still broke and I was still struggling and I was still procrastinating. And so I, I picked up my uh, um, Wayne Dyer's book, Looking Out oh, yeah. for Number One. That was my first self-help book in 1980. And Wayne Dyer just recently passed away. Mm -hmm. And I read a lot of his books. I read Richard Carlson's book, you know, the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Uh, Gary Zukoff, Don Miguel Ruiz, Tony Robbins. I just got into it. Because yeah. these people all seem, and you know, a lot of it was bull. Didn't really apply to me. But the few things that it did, man, I held on so tight. And I would practice these things. You know, it's like a religion. It's like a philosophy. It's like, te it's technique. It's just new technique. And when you apply it, it didn't always work right away. I mean, it came there certainly with fitness. You know, I wasn't, you know, instantly fit because I decided to be, you know, I had to go through a process, yeah. a learning process. And I finally figured out, oh, I don't have to be perfect now. I don't have to be attached to the outcome. Um, it's not necessarily going to work right away. You know, these are basic things that people still get stuck on, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I said, enjoy the journey, man. You know, just enjoy the journey and, uh, and try some of these new techniques. And we used to say no, try to say yes. I mean, it sounds like a, you know, a Jim Carrey movie. Yes, man. <laughs> yes, man. But I mean, really, ultimately, I mean, you know, what happens when you say no? You get nothing. What are the first two letters of nothing? No. So I try to, you know, I don't do that anymore, man. I just, I go out and I learn and I don't proclaim to be the expert in everything. And it's just gave me an amazing, fulfilling life. Oh, wow. Thank you for that story, man. That really, like, it helps me paint that understanding of what it takes, right? And I love it. And so... Tony, man, you were saying that, you know, it's, it's so important that we, we actually make that decision, right? We, and I, I, actually, before that, I wanted to talk about that Snickers bar, right? Because I know that you're, and this is what I like about you, man. It's that it's not like, you know, you, you proclaim that, you know, you have to stick to the strict diet every day, every week, right? But there are, op, there's, there's, it's open for you to, you try your best, right? You do your best to try and stay as healthy as you can, but there are times where you're not going to be. Right. There's right. times where you're going to not, well, we won't call it relapse, but you know, you go in and you just enjoy life a, bit, a little bit, right? Have a, have that McDonald's meal, have that Snickers bar, right? What did you say? <laughs> what did I say? McDonald's? McDonald's. No, no, no. No, here's what I do. You need a release valve, right? You really do. You need to just sort of enjoy some of those comfort foods from your past, right? You've made this huge decision. For me, the the fitness thing kicked in almost right away. Like I came out here and I, you know, I was minimum doing three days a week, sometimes seven, sometimes 15 days in a row. Now I'm almost every day. I, I work out almost every day. I might take two days off a month. That's just kind of the pattern. I'm in this great pattern right now that I love. Yeah. But the food thing took forever for me. You know, it's like, hey, I just worked out. I'm having a double cheese chimichanga and a, and a, and a triple cheeseburger right now and a couple of Dr. Peppers, thank you very much. But I was a thin guy. I was an ectomorph. That's sort of my, my, my natural state based on my two skinny parents mm -hmm. uh, having sex and making me, right? So, yeah. so it, it was easy for me to cheat. But the food and the bad, you know, the alcohol and the Dr. Peppers was affecting, I was creating this mood swings, right? And little did I know that it wasn't really any good for my intestines or my lungs or my pancreas or liver, you know what I mean? Uh, but I was thin and I was young and my metabol metabolism was pretty good. But over the course of time, like two, three, four years, I was a vegan for a while. I was a vegetarian for a while. I was pex, uh, you know, uh, pex, uh, flexitarian, pescatarian. I had every itarian. You could <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Now I have just itises, arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'm, you know, PT has helped in foam rolling. But, but yeah. um, and so that, you know, now I'm in this eat the healthiest food I can as often as I can. I don't have cheap meals. I just don't, I can't spend an entire meal eating food. I just don't want to eat. So mm -hmm. I have a cheap snack because they're lower calorie counts. Right, the Snickers bar is like 240 calories. That I can handle every once in a while. But a whole mm -hmm. meal or a whole day, uh-uh, that's just, that's not me. Mm, I like that. I like that idea, man. I got to start applying more of that because that sounds, yeah. Cause once you do have that, then you're like, you feel really horrible afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Cause it is, it's like introducing, like if I went and had a, like three or four beers, I would feel like I've been in a car wreck. I just, you know, my body's a Ferrari now. It's not a, you know, it's not a 1966 rebuilt Volkswagen bug. You know what I mean? Like it used to be. 
Oh, I love it, man. My buddy's a Ferrari. I got to make that a quotable, man. That's awesome, mm-hmm. dude. Awesome. Treat it like you would a racehorse or a Ferrari. You just got to. You know what I mean? And uh, the funny thing about the racehorse and the Ferrari, uh, you can get another horse or another car, but you only get one of these, man. You only get one. <laughs> and you can't oh. replace it. And if you start doing the damage, then you're relying on your doctor and pharmacist for a prolonged, miserable state. And uh, I'm not interested. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like I said to my clients, you know, you got to respect the temple, right? You have to respect the temple. If you mess up the temple, you mess up their life. Yeah. You are what you do. You are what you think. You are what you exercise. You are all those things. I mean, you are the people you hang around the most. You're your, you know, you're your thoughts. It's, it's a, it's a mixed bag, but, and, and you know, you're going to have, you know, crazy thoughts and you're going to be down sometimes. And, you know, you're going to bring some people, old people into your life that maybe you haven't hung out with a while and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I'll bring them back. No, you know, and then you learn that lesson only once or twice, hopefully. And, and it's just about, you know, cleaning house it really is across the board with every aspect of your life and, and being diplomatic about it with folks. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people go, you know, and I'm really trying really hard. And my husband's giving me crap. My kids are giving me crap. And the people at work are giving me crap. And I just say, you just look them in the eyes and you say, this is important to me. I don't like who I was before. I need to make some changes and I truly believe this is going to work. So if I don't get support from you, guess how much time we get to spend together? Zero. So I need your support. I need you to get on board. You don't have to follow my thing. You do whatever you want to keep smoking cigarettes and eating burgers and, and, and being miserable and taking the escalator. Cause I ain't taking the escalator anymore. Mm. I'm living large. I'm having adventure and I'm having fun. You can either jump on, but I don't need your crap anymore. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I love that, man. It's so important that so many times we get driven. We get soaked up in what other people think about us and what we're doing that we get, we don't, we end up giving up our dreams. We end up giving up working on what's important for us. So I appreciate that. And yeah. thank you so much for bringing that up. You're welcome. Man. And so Tony, I know you got a new program out, right? It's called the 22 minute hard corpse, right? And that's inspired by the military. So, let me, let me replay this for a bit here, Tony. I mean, like, you know, we know that change takes a while. Change, t- you, when you, we need it to manifest itself and, and work it through. It doesn't happen overnight. And do you find that with the health industry that so many people are demanding change to happen instantly, demanding that I do this one workout and then I should just be awesome now, man. Where are my six packs, Tony, right? Where are my six pack? And I'm not talking about the beers, but I'm talking about the, the temple, right? My Ferrari ain't running as well as, as it is. How do you work through that with people that, you know, look, this is 22 minutes, but you have to do this like every day. You have to do this like, you know, consistently for months on end. How, how should people be approaching that? And how do they actually keep themselves motivated, man? Right. And know that if this diet or this health program isn't working for them. Well, what blows my mind in 2016 is people still seem to think they can, you know, if they buy into something and they do it three days a week and don't change their food habits, that they're going to get some kind of results. And they might. But it'll be marginal, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, but here's the fact for almost everybody, and, and, and it's, this is not a universal truth. It really depends on the individual. If you're 25 and an ex-gymnast, it's not going to be the same as if you're 55 and a mother of three who's never exercised a day in her life and she's got 45 pounds of this, right? So yep. you have to keep all these things in mind. You, you just, the only thing you have to do is show up. You know, I always say do your best and forget the rest. Mm-hmm. Start and complete the program. Start and complete the program. And if you cannot complete the program and you cannot do the food thing right, well, then you're going to have marginal results. The first month's always going to be miserable for anybody. I mean, you know, I don't, even if you're a professional athlete, if you're a professional athlete who's lost some weight, who's trying to get it going on again, and you've never done these particular types of exercises, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's the first, four weeks. give it the first month, man. But I'm telling you, and for some people it's two weeks because you know, whatever, they haven't worked out in six weeks and they're, they've gained three pounds. Obviously some things are going to shift for them quicker for somebody who's got a different situation. I mean, Richard Neal, a guy who did P90X lost 242 pounds. That didn't happen in 90 days. Didn't mm-hmm. happen. It happened in four rounds, but he kept going. You have to keep going. You cannot stop. Right? So yeah. that's the whole thing. And it has the, the food thing is everything. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people push so hard with P90X or the brand new 22 and hardcore and they didn't change their diet. I mean, you, here's the thing. Health comes from food. Food is medicine. Food is fuel, right? So food can also be poison. It can also shorten your life. And, and, everybody, and I, can, I can line up 100 people who aren't nutritionists and most of them know which is which. But most of them can't figure out how to make the healthy food taste good. They assume that the healthy food tastes like wax and cardboard because they, you know, they haven't found the right spices with a brand new 22-minute hardcore workout program. 
I did a whole spice section in there because too many people, got, they, they open up their, their pantry and they see you find salt. You know what yeah. I mean? They don't have, they don't have like the magic five. And we talk about that and, and they don't, they don't know how to prepare food and they think every meal is going to take an hour to prepare and an hour and a half to clean up. And it's not the case. I mean, people just don't have enough information. So 22 minute hardcore is 22 minute workouts. There's three cardio, there's three resistance, there's two core. Mm -hmm. And there's a hell week. If you want to do the hell week, the final ninth week, you don't have to, but the people that we've had four test groups four. Yeah. already in the program only just launched right because we want to make sure absolutely 100 percent that the thing works and my sister who was not looking to lose a pound fit as a fiddle lost 10 pounds it's wow. purely based on the sequences based on the type of exercises and based uh, and based on the food she was eating so whether it's p90x or 22 minute hardcore or slim and six or you know your elliptical or your your walk runs in the neighborhood it's got to be a food fitness combination and that's the only way you're going to see dramatic change and you've got to be consistent you got to work out 22 days a month there's usually 30, 15 days on means 15 days off, which means you ain't going to see much. You might as well throw yourself down a set of stairs, <laughs> right? Because, you know, yeah, yeah. you end up with exercise bipolar disorder. You know, you, it's like, you know, you don't eat every other day. You don't go to work every other day. You don't sleep every other day. You do all these other things to survive on this earth. But if you want to thrive on this earth, mm. then you got you to gotta work out five, six, seven days a week. I mean, you just have to. And if you can't buy into that, that ain't your thing. Well, then you will suffer from the same suffer, stuff you suffered from um, uh, before. And, you know, look at school. First grade, second grade, ninth grade, 10, 11, 12, college. And people want to get in shape in, in, in two weeks. What, are you out of your mind? It's just not, it's not come, I mean, realistically, you know, and the beginning is a grind. The first four weeks is a grind. And that's when most people bail. They bail at the end of the first week, the second week, third week. They never see week five and six. But the ones who see week five and six, no matter what dramatic physical, mental, or emotional change that occurs, are the ones that break through that wall. And, and, and a lot of them change their lives forever. No. Oh. I love it, man. I love it how you say, you know, the first month is the grind because you got to get up early. You got to do things that you're not used to and you just got to keep going at it. And so that's why it feels like a grind. And I, I appreciate you for being honest, man, for just calling it out that it, it is the grind. Oh, yeah. it, no, it's, it's going to be awesome from the get go. And you're going to love it. You're going to wake up all starry eyed and excited. And then you're going <laughs> to get down there and do everything perfect. And in about a week and a half, you're going to look like Marilyn Monroe and Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. <laughs> Or uh, that's it's like that's my generation. Let's see, um, uh, Beyonce and uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Oh, the man. kids, the kids want to be these days. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is it now? Uh, who knows, right? Justin Timberlake. We we'll just say him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. good to go on that one. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, Tony. So, Tony, man, we're going to start wrapping up this show. I really appreciate you jumping on. So, we're going to throw over some quick fire questions your way, right? As we wrap up, yeah. Yeah, man. Right. We're going to start off with our signature question, Tony. This is what we call the time travel moment. Yeah, if you could go back to any moment in your life, Tony, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, whatever it is, right? a moment where you could go back and you can look at little Tony and go, you know, Tony, this is what you, I know now. This is what you need to know. Right? From all the experience that you've gathered, what moment would you go back to and what would you tell little Tony, man, that he needs to know? I would tell him they didn't need to be so scared all the time about everything mm. you know what i mean i'd give the kid the biggest hug in the world and i'd say it's going to be just fine don't feel like you gotta you know don't worry about what other people think of you that's number one like everybody kids are so young kids are so freaked out about other kids opinions about them you know they're so easily mortified by just the simplest little hard time that they have you know what i mean they strike out in the baseball game or the bully you know, pushes them down in the, in the playground. And, and none of these things matter. They don't matter at all. I mean, you will rise up and you, and you will succeed. And, and uh, you know what I mean? Keep fighting the good fight, you know, it, it, and, and don't be so afraid and don't be so scared. And, and, uh, and, and, um, and a lot of kids don't have that mentor. You know what I mean? I, 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 my dad was on the road a lot, you know what I mean? And uh, just, you know, trying to provide for the family. And so he, had, he was a little hands off because his father was way hands on. So he, he did just the opposite. <laughs> And, and, you know, you want a little hands on, you want a little tender, loving care and a hug and, and, uh, and some support. And that's what I would tell a little me because I was a frightened little dude. Oh, yeah, man. And I think a lot of other people still need to hear that. So that's awesome. bro. Awesome. Next question we have, Tony, is what's the best piece of advice you've ever received in your life, man? Whether it be about health, diet, or even just general life, man, what's, what's one of the biggest pieces of advice that you've 
taken around with you? Uh, I, you know, um, I, like I said, I never had a, a, a mentor, but there was a theme that kicked in quite a bit from a lot of the books I was reading, a lot of the seminars mm-hmm. uh, I was going to, and that was believe in the practice, you know, believe in the practice of whatever it was, whether it be a financial uh, seminar or a relationship seminar, because I didn't have any specific plan. I didn't have mm-hmm. any specific goals. I didn't have a strategy. I was just kind of, you know, winging it, half-assing it, you know what I mean? And yeah. so all I needed was some structure. Um, and I had structure in school. I mean, I know how to, you know, pass a reading class or a math class or a science or social studies class. Yeah. But I didn't have any structure in life. And, and I tell you, man, if schools had more of that, you know, here's how you not get in credit card debt. Here's how you, you know, uh, get all your insurance stuff lined up. Here's how you, you know, don't overextend yourself beyond, beyond your income. Uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't have those kinds of lessons, you know, so it's, 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 it took me later in life, you know, I didn't really start making any money till my forties. So it was a, it was a mess up to that point. And, uh, thank God I got that Intel. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, man. Thank God you kept at the grind, man. And eventually you found it, man. It's awesome. Yeah. It's all a grind, but if you enjoy the grind, the grind is the journey. The journey is the best part. Like the finishing the, fi- the like crossing the finish line is like this little moment where you go, yes. Yeah. But all that stuff before is the best part, even though it's hard. <laughs> hard is, you know what I mean? A new word for hard should be awesome. You know what I mean? It's, if, if, <laughs> if we all knew that hard and difficult and struggle was just awesome, because it is. I mean, because there's always a payoff. There's always a positive payoff. But without it, you know, with lethargy and, and with procrastination, there's just this, you know, uh, yeah. Why do I, uh, yeah, and the, the, why do I have to keep doing this kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, Tony, man, I mean, you've read a lot of books. You've also mentioned a lot of books through this interview as well. But if there's one book that really sticks out that people must read, that people must watch, or sorry, read, what would that book be, man? Wow, man. I tell you this, I have some favorites, you know, um, Into the Void. You wouldn't think I would, uh, Into the Void is a great book, uh, by, uh, uh Joe Simpson. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a, it's a mountain climbing story. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a true story based on an experience that this mountain climber had, uh, where he was just hanging in the precipice and with his climbing partner. And there were two guys on either end of a rope. And, um, one didn't know if the other one was alive. Like the one at the bottom thought the one was dead and the one top thought the bottom guy was dead and so they just hung out there sort of wondering and at one point the guy at the top said i have to cut the rope i'm assuming that i'm not you know the guy at the bottom he cuts the rope the guy falls shatters his leg and he crawls the hell out of there you know i mean it's just wow. a, an amazing story of, of perseverance and survival um and then john rady's book I, i'm such a huge fan of john rady i had lunch with him the other day he wrote a book called spark it's the effects of physical activity on the brain and and you read that book and you go oh my god i gotta work out i have to work out now because it's not about the physical. It's not about my reflection of the mirror. It's about, it's about my journey on this earth. It's about my productivity and my cognition and my memory and my outlook. That's what fitness does. Like you look at me, right? I'm fired up. I'm fired yeah. up because I did 24 sets of shoulder. I did 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 29 sets of uh, shoulders and arms today. And it's just releasing, you know, oxygenated blood into the brain, changing the hippocampus, changing the dente gyrus, releasing norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, all these drugs that we get that are waiting for us to move and breathe right but now we use alcohol and drugs and sugary foods to get a little short-term version of a dopamine release Mm -hmm. and that just makes us miserable later and this exercise makes you awesome all the time for 23 hours until you do it again you know what i mean (laughs) john Brady's book spark and of course the big picture the 11 laws that'll change your life that's 35 years of experience in one little book Love it, man. We'll add them to the show notes as well, man. Thank you for that. Just a few more left, brother. So yeah, go for it, man. Tony, man. Tony, man. In today's modern world, right? The modern man, right? The modern man that we are today. I mean, it feels like to me we're missing a lot of things. It feels like the world is is needs a lot more from men. And what do you think that one thing that is missing from the modern man in today's world that needs to just happen? That these men just need to start doing more or being more. What would that one thing be, man? Oh, I think it's mentorship, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mm. It ain't about you, man. Get your act together and get it so together that it's not about you anymore. It's about you and 
doing something for somebody else. You know what I mean? I'll tell you, my life changed the minute I went out of my way for somebody I didn't like. I was reading, I think it was, um, what was the book? The Magic Lamp. Yeah, uh, Keith Ellis's book, The Magic Lamp. I could be wrong, but that's another one. Add that to your list. Yeah. And it was an exercise at the end of every chapter. And one of the exercises was go out of the way and do something, you know, sort of extraordinary for somebody that you don't even like. What? So I asked this, I asked this, I'm like, oh, okay. I got, I mean, I don't even do nice things for people I like. So I got to do something really crazy here. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy, I, I thought he was kind of a tool and uh, to be perfectly honest. And uh, I offered to train him and cause he was bitching about his weight. And uh, he said, yes, which was like, oh no, now I have to actually train this guy. Yeah. And uh, a year later, he introduced me to Carl Deichler, and Carl Deichler and I created Power 90, and now, wow. you know, I have this life. And so, it's one of those things that, you know, you think your worst en enemy could probably create a completely different outlook for you. You know what I mean? And nine times out of ten, you're not going to get the result that you, you know, you're not going to get that result. Hmm. Do that often, if you do that often and reach out to people, because we get, after a while, like when we're kids, it's like, yes! Show me everything. And then when you're 85, you know, you're looking through that friggin' hole, yeah, looking yeah. at the ground. I don't want to meet anybody. I want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I'm just a curmudgeon. I'm a Mr. Curmudgeon man, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm the churlish curmudgeon man. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you don't want, you just, you reach out and you talk to people and you engage people because, you know, who knows, man. And, and I, I think that's it. Just help search for, for people that you want to you wanna mentor. And, uh, and, you know, you don't want to give unsolicited advice. That's the worst oh, kind. Yeah. That's the worst kind. You really want to help. Your intentions are fantastic. You're speech, speaking French, and they're hearing, you know, uh, Ukrainian. I don't know what they're hearing. But, yeah. but, you know, you just want to make sure that whoever you're talking to, whoever you're trying to help, is looking for it, you know? Mm -hmm. If they're asking, that means it's time to help folks. If they're not... Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Love it, man. Love it. Amazing, amazing. Such important advice there, guys, for the people listening. And so just a few more left, these last two here, Tony. So how would you describe being truly healthy, man? How would you describe what it means to be truly healthy? Well, you know, I, I would say there's, um, there's, there's five things that come to mind right out of the box. And they're really kind of shockingly simple. Mm -hmm. One is sleep sleep here's the five there's the hand right yeah and we don't get enough and we wonder why we're out there we think we have we need meds and we think we're freaked out we think we got too much stress it's just because your 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 circadian cycles are not completing over the course of an eight hour period and so whenever you cut them short as a result of whatever you know you got the wrong mattress your, your room you got too much noise in the room you, you got the you got your i don't have a phone or a tv in my bed Mm -hmm. Get it out, ain't there, don't want one because it messes with the most critical part of my whole life. And what is sleep? Sleep is recovery. Yeah. Sleep is healing. S sleep is, is restoring. That sleep is huge. And everybody's trying to get by on five, six hours of sleep. And if you're exercising almost every day, you got to heal, man. Mm -hmm. And those circadian cycles, you know, you go from RAM to deep, and blah, blah, blah. They're like about 40 minutes long each. And when you cut them short, people don't even know what the hell they are, but they're so important. Number two is hydration. People are dehydrated. They're just dehydrated. And when you're drinking a lot of coffee and soda, you're more dehydrated. I know it's liquid, but it ain't water. Yeah, and H2O is how you get there, man. So that's when I'm hydrated, oh, my knees don't ache. Oh, my neck doesn't hurt. Oh, I don't feel so tired. You know what I mean? I have to force water because that's one area that I definitely need, need help. Um, and, the, and then it's food and fitness. There's, that's three and four, right out of the box. You got to work out all the time because it changes your brain chemistry. It's not just mental. I mean, it's not just physical. It's mental and emotional, period period and mental and emotional is what runs your world not the physical the physical is like hey look at me oh look i can throw a baseball you know whatever i can lift a weight no no the physical changes the mental and emotional which is who you are not only internally but externally to everybody else right so that's important and then and then number five is 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 purpose and, and accountability i put those two in one category but just like what am i doing you know what i mean like there was this great story about an accountant who had a job in a cubicle with no window and was miserable but he loved bikes the bikes. You go to the bike store every weekend and just hang out. I mean, the employees would go, dude, why don't you work here one day a week? Because you, you know, you, you don't worry about the stuff than we do. Anyway, yeah, yeah. five years later, he owned the place. Wow. You know, he, well, he asked his wife, can I work like on the afternoons on Saturday? She said, yeah. So, my God, you're over there anyway. You might as well get paid. Right? right? And so, he's like, and then within five years, he owns the joint. He ain't in that cubicle anymore. No, he ain't. He owns a bike store, which is what he should have 
come in in the first place, right? So that he found his purpose. And then, and then, and then you are the company you keep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you're around naysayers and wannabes and people who bitch and moan and aren't doing anything or living a big life. Right? Like, what, what if I took you and me and we started hanging out with world class rock climbers for a year? You think yeah. we'd get good at rock climbing, Richard? <laughs> Dominate yeah, that rock, have right? Stories to tell? You think that would be, you think we'd get fit from that? You know what I mean? I mean, so just go hang out with cool people. You know, go find them. They're out there. They're everywhere. You know what I mean? Join a gym, go to a rock climbing gym, join a bike club. They're everywhere. I mean, go hang out with some strangers who will become some of the coolest people in your life. Yeah. Awesome, man. Epic, man. Epic, epic. And one final question here, Tony, to wrap up, right? To wrap yes, up is if you had 30 seconds left to live, man, and you're surrounded by, you know, your family, your friends, the people you've impacted in this world, and you had to leave with them one last piece of advice, what would that be, man? 30 seconds. Oh, my God. I'm going to need 30 seconds to think about that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I would go back to purpose. Figure out why you're here right away, right now. This is it. I got 28, 27. You hate your job. You hate your relationship. Life is too short. I'm, you know, I'm 57. I got... 18 seconds left. I got to just tell you, man, just drop it all. Find the smile, find the happiness, find the adventure, go to a different country, get your passport renewed, go mm-hmm. see, go do, go be, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's what I would tell people. It's really about that. It, go, go experience that. Yes. Say, yeah, check your boxes, <laughs> boxes, baby. Cause yeah. uh, a lot of people don't, you know, I know people, I, I more, I run into more people who don't even have a passport. They, they don't know what, they don't know what Canada looks like. I mean, you need a passport. To get, you've never been to London. Mm-hmm. You've never been, to, you've never been to, to Tuscany. You've never been to Japan or Korea. You've never been like, you know, I mean, I've been to, I've been, thank God for the military because I've been to a lot of military bases and then I add a little vacation time. But, you know, Venice, Italy, like holy smokes. Like you get there and you think, am I in the middle of a movie? This isn't even, am I, am I Brad Pitt right now? Because this <laughs> is real. This place is real. It's more real in person than you can look at any movie or TV or go on. Oh man, you got to go to Venice. You got to go to Tuscany. You got to go to Siena, Italy, and go to the Piazza there and just eat pizza there, you know, and sit back and go, what? You know, Chamonix, France. What? What? Paris. What? I mean, you know, I mean, it ain't the strip mall down the corner, man. Yeah. Go find your purpose, hang out with some like minded people, and sign up for that trip because, boom, life is great. Easy, cool. If you just step outside your comfort zone, just a little. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, Tony, this has been an amazing chat, man. An amazing chat. And so, Tony, man, yeah. I have one plug. Very important. We all know about Tony. We all know about the twenty-two minute hardcore. If anybody's been listening in and wants to live large and have a lot of fun, you know what I mean. You just go to Tony Horton Life dot com and you don't get just hardcore you get everything you know where i am i'm going to be the omega institute in upstate new york in june i think we've got about 10 tickets left mm-hmm. that's the omega institute in june uh, and it's a three-day seminar 100 people max it's super intensive obstacle courses workouts seminars q a autographs photographs all that fun stuff so you know if you're anywhere i mean people have come from spain and australia for that event which is yeah. crazy you know what i mean yeah. some actually come from new york which is where it is um, but uh, that's on Tony Horton Life, and that's where you get 22-minute uh, uh, hardcore. And my latest pet project, I'm super excited, which is Tony Horton Care. Because yeah. one thing about California, when I came out to California, I shredded my skin. I want to be tan all the time. Mm, not good after like 20 years, right? So I worked with uh, Ultimate Salon Professionals, a phenomenal company worldwide, and they made me some Tony Horton Care. It's, it's uh, skin lotion, body lotion, and hair and body uh, shampoo. Um, and that's Tony Horton Life slash TH Care. Boom, Amazing. there are my plugs. Everything else is free. Amazing. And guys, of course, oh, that's where oh. you can get your books as well, right? Thank you. Yeah. And if you want to get the big picture, uh, you can get that online. You can go to Amazon. I think they have it on sale. But the promo code, here's, I'm going to actually read this right now, everybody. Tony oh, Horton. no. RP, it's R-P-B-O-G-O, R-P-B-O-G-O. Right. It's just good stuff. It fixed my skin, man. My skin was a wreck, and now it's not, so. Yeah. And, man, you do not look like you're close to 60 at all, good sir. So, man. Well, thank you. I got perfect lighting right now. I got, this, I got the sound, <laughs> the shades, everything's just right. Uh, you maybe. don't either, man, Richard. You look awesome, brother. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. And so, 
Guys, this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast today with the superstar himself, the man, Tony Horton. And make sure, guys, we need to get this message out there. Tony's message is so important that we've got to get it out there as well as all the other guests on this show. So make sure you head over to iTunes and rate the podcast so that we can just spread this message because this is the thing, guys. I don't, I don't want to keep this as a best-kept secret, right? Tony doesn't want this to be a best-kept secret, so make sure it goes out, right, Tony? Well, yeah, Richard, I, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people are trying to sell you something, except for that Tony Horn care, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, but in general, this whole conversation is just to help people be happy. I mean, you said that at the very beginning of the show. It's just being happy. I, I was so miserable, and now I'm not. It's because I follow this philosophy that works for me, and it's worked for tens of thousands of people. And it might be through P90X or 22 Minute Hardcore, one of my other programs, or one of my books, but it's just... It's just basic intel. It's not complicated. You know what I mean? It's not like it's AP, AP algebra. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just common sense stuff that just makes you feel good. And, and everybody deserves that. And uh, if I can do it, man, the laziest guy in the world, heck, anybody can. Exactly, guys. Exactly. So that wraps it up, guys. Tony leaving his final message here on the show. So, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And remember, to go out there, go live with love, and go smash it. And I'll see you in the next one.